in favor of jungle justice. Yeah. No, but how we prevent it? We are going live now. All right. And we're live. Okay. So welcome to Orange Table Talk. And we are here again now with Mr. Vegas today and Ethne Miller Simpson of the um, No 90 Wonder Group. And what's your uh, the name of your other group that you are with again, Ethne? The Women Entrepreneurs, Women Entrepreneurs Network, Network of the yes, Caribbean. I know that network. Network. And I met quite a few of your members. <laughs> I don't think Mr. Vegas need much introduction, but Mr. Vegas is an artist who has been very vocal on social issues and how we should deal with those issues. I'm Patricia Duncan Sutherland from the PNP Women's Movement. And we host Orange Table Talk. We try to do every two weeks. If not, we do it at least once a month. And what we do is we cover issues that affect women and children and families. And uh, we have the discussion with persons who are either experts in the field or have experienced the issues that we are talking about. And uh, tonight we're going to explore the issue of the sex offenders registry. We expect to be joined shortly by Donna Scott Motley, who is the uh, spokesperson on gender and uh, um, justice, justice, right, for the People's National Party. And uh, Donna it has been uh, uh, in the justice sphere for quite a while as a lawyer. And, uh, you know, we are hoping that she can give us some guidance in this as well and give people an idea of what's going on, All right? Um, I'm not seeing the chat here, but are you seeing people online, Crystal? Yeah, okay. All right, and so here we're going to talk today about the Sex Offenders Registry. Should it be made public in Jamaica? We've had a Sex Offenders Registry Act since 2016 or 2015 thereabout. Um, or the register has been there. The act has been around in 20, since 2012, I think. And the sex offenders registry is managed by the Department of Corrections in Jamaica. It is, in fact, a private registry in Jamaica. And there are, are groups of people who are the Department of Corrections is authorized to give information to. Uh, and you get this information by writing a letter to the Department of Corrections. So today we want to talk about it because it's very, very current in Jamaica now. We have, you know, increased, uh, increased sexual crimes in Jamaica against women and children and some boys. We're not seeing much sexual crime against men in Jamaica or reported, so much of it reported, but how do we manage this and how do we deal with this and how do we make sure that our society and our communities are protected? That's what's on the board. And we are even more, you know, like nervous about it now because we have seen in recent times very young children, five years old, being assaulted, sexually assaulted, and older women, 90 years old, being sexually assaulted in their homes. And so it seems to be on the rise in Jamaica. And what do we need to do at this point? So I want to say welcome, Ethne, and welcome, Mr. Vegas, and welcome to all of those online. And let's hope we have an exciting conversation today. All right. Mr. Vegas, you want to start and give us your opening remarks on this situation as we have it now? Um, thank you for having me on the, on the program. Yeah. Well, uh, I've got involved with this advocacy for, um, I think it was 20, 2005, 2006, mm. created the Jamaica Men Against Rape Foundation um, because of that Shanika Anderson case. Remember the six-year-old downtown where yes. she walked away or wandered away from her mother or grandmother. And when they found her, it was like, you know, the, 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 the was so gruesome. It was, was hard to fathom how someone could do this to a child. Yeah, so I, I, I created Jamaica Men Against Rape. And ever since, I've been trying to create this awareness on how to protect our children. And I've seen many cases over the years where they, we speak about them for a short 
period. And then that's it. It's, it's swept under the carpet after that. I try to link up with a few media houses over the years. So mm -hmm. Some form of, um, you know, like when them have crime stuff or them have give out, give out yes. or something like that. So I had an idea, like, you know, for each case, for each case, excuse me, like one case a month, put up, a, put, a, put up like Shanika and just a picture and other missing girls and the children that have been raped. And, give, you know, give some reward, like, you know, information, you know, like solve a case, solve a case a month. So I was always trying to, you know, you know, be this voice for the voiceless. So this is where we're at now. I took a look at the sex registry and I realized that it is useless. So I've been advocating for, for, for the amendment to the, the sex registry as well. To make it to make it public. But to I'm going to deep into that part of it. And not only just to make it public, it, it's, it's like to, it, it, I think it's, it needs an, an overall. OK, we want to come to the real points of overall, but I want to just bring in Ethne. Because you said one of the things, reasons why you got involved is that, you know, these young, these children are getting raped and people talk about it. And like just last week, the whole situation where the young ladies from St. Thomas, everybody in uh, outrage, but the outrage now shifted the pastor. And Ethne, Ethne's organization is no nine day wonder. Yeah. So you want to come in and say why, how your organization was formed and what's your perspective on what's going on? I'm going to come back into the details. Sure. Well, thank you for having me, Patricia. And um, good evening to, to everyone who is on the call. I, um, in terms of No Nine Day Wonder, and speaking on behalf of that organization, how we came to be is, as the name suggests, there are a lot of things in Jamaica that we colloquially and culturally the simply say, sure, that will pass. And it's the same thing that was implied by Mr. Vegas when he said that, you know, some things are swept under the carpet after all of the talk, after all of the, the excitement of something that is done. And a group of, of women, and actually we have a few men in the group, came together coming out of the broad right case earlier this mm -hmm. year. Um, we actually came together and said, listen, we did not like how things were handled. I think we only represent... Uh, I guess a, a part of Jamaica, some Jamaicans and the thoughts of Jamaicans on that issue. Many persons were not pleased with how it was handled, how it went. Um, there are still so many unanswered questions to, to repeat something that Mr. Vegas just said, that there are so many cases and you can cite, unfortunately, sadly, we can cite many cases that people are still having questions about even years later. So this, this group of, of activists came together and we're also a part of the Advocate Network. And there's mm -hmm. another organization that I represent, a president of, which is the Women Entrepreneurs Network of the Caribbean, that is also a member of this Advocate Network. Um, and really, very simply, we're saying there are too many cases that are unsolved. There are too many scenarios around violence against women, not just sexual violence, but violence against women. So that is even a broader category. Right, you know, and we are we are not pleased with even the the frameworks that are in place. So whether we have legal frameworks, justice frameworks, etc., they're 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 not keeping pace with our reality, because sometimes the work may be done, and in that moment they're adequate. But give it a few months, give it a few years, then unfortunately the incidents outpace the changes mm -hmm. that have happened. So. It requires constant work. It requires constant advocacy. And as we would have seen in the case in, in, in St. Thomas, or the cases in St. Thomas, which are still not entirely resolved, but mm -hmm. maybe the public has moved on to the next exciting thing. So the question is now, when do we go back and make sure that all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed? How do we give answers to not just victims, but to, to civil society? and to persons who really simply just want a better space to live in called Jamaica. Okay, and I get that. And we are definitely there. And I think we also, we are, we are very aware that we have to increase the voice of women and children in Jamaica. We have to amplify that voice. And we also have to get the awareness of our society out there um, increased so that we can have a different reaction to it. I mean, there are some shortfalls in our justice system as well that we're going to need to talk about. Um, 
and but in particular now we're talking about the sexual offenses registry and you know mr vegas you're talking about you don't think it's enough the specified offenses that are that are captured under the sexual offenses register registry are incest rape marital rape sexual touching or interference sexual grooming of a child sexual intercourse mm -hmm. with a person under 16 householder inducing or encouraging violation of child under 16 grievous sexual assault indecent assault abduction of a child under 16 violation of persons suffering from mental disorder or physical ability forcible abduction procuration procuring violation of person by threats or fraud or administering drugs abduction of a child with intent to have sexual intercourse unlawful detention with intention to have sexual intercourse living on earnings of prostitution living of earnings on prostitution i never oh, all right well offenses under section 76 77 and 79 of the offenses against the persons act on natural crime and so this is all of these fall under the offenses against the person Trafficking in Persons and Suppression and, Punish and Punishment Act and the Child Care and Protection Act. Right? So, so Shelly, oh, and Donna is with us just when I'm reading out the law part. Hi, Donna. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? <laughs> yes. So, we were just about to talk, you know, Mr. Vegas was saying he don't think that the Sexual Offenses Registry Act is strong enough. So, I was just reading out the, air, the offenses that it covers under the Act. So I wanted him to just add what is his thoughts on it. And I want to come to you, Donna, give you a chance to compose and hear where the conversation is going. Yes. All right, Mr. Vegas, tell us now, what are your thoughts? Why is it need to strengthen? Well, I think uh, it needs to weaken, by the way. Let me just add, I think that living on earnings of prostitution should not be included. I saw that telephone phone ridiculous because it's, it, it, it baffles. Um, it's baffling to know that you know the ladies i i drive past at night time to go to my house should be on the sex registry if they if they if they get arrested but people who committed sexual um offenses overseas can just come in the country and just um free to roam um and and, and is not placed on the sex registry so it's, it's it's kind of you know funny to me you know that that was on it as well but let us just look at even the um the 10 years um that you're supposed to be placed on the sex registry You're saying living on earnings prostitution offenses under section 76 77 and um and 79 of the offenses against the person act and natural crime attempts and outrage are decency offenses such and such and such so what i want to look at the act offenses under section 10 and the child care protection act prohibit against sale of trafficking children reporting sex offenders who are not exempt from registration and reporting <clears throat> requirements shall within three days from being sentenced, three days from being sentenced, yeah, to go on a sex registry. So if it's three days from being sentenced, you go on a sex registry and it's a 10 years um, mandate that they implemented, right? So you're saying to me when, when someone gets um, is found guilty and you have to register in three years, what if you get 10 years in jail? That means when you come out, you're not on a sex registry? Oh, well, I don't know how you interpret that, Donna. Or do they register you from prison? From court. From court. Yes. So once you're once, once once you're convicted, right? Then the court uh, can send the information to the registry. Of course, you can remember, Mr. Vegas. It's so nice to meet you. Remember <laughs> that you can um you can make an application to be exempt from registration in certain circumstances. For example, if it's, it was a case of incest and you want, you know, your identity to be protected and so on, there are, there are circumstances that the judge can explore to determine whether or not you should be exempted. Right. But okay. the question is, after the expiration date, the expiration of 10 years, from the date of the imposition of the registration yes. and reporting requirements, original period, a sex offender shall be eligible for termination. So ex can you... Um, if you've got 10 years for rape and you come out, you got, then yes. that means you, are, you do not need to register again. You wouldn't be on the registry as far as I understand it. And I can see exactly what Mr. Vegas' concern is. But do remember at the same time that when we are dealing with legislation, we have to try to balance everybody's rights. Um, 
is incarcerated. 10 years is a good long sentence, Mr. Vegas, trust me. 10 days is a long sentence when you see the conditions in the prison. Yeah. And uh, I know how you feel about it. I, I myself had not considered the point you're raising, but I think it, it speaks to the fact that no, you would not actually be registered as a sex offender if you came out after 10 years. Because it says well, after something, you've been something. convicted. I wanted to ask a question. Ask a question. After, after the 10 years, Mr. Vegas, don't it, isn't it that you have to apply to be taken off the registry? Yes. Yes. yes you so have therefore, to if you apply after 10 years and the, um, the Department of Corrections does not believe that you are a threat, wouldn't it be reasonable to take you off the registry? It says here, it says here, um, after the expiration of 10 years from the date of the imposition of the registration and reporting requirements period, a sex offender shall be eligible from termination of the reporting requirements imposed. So I'm not sure. They're eligible, but it will mean right. right. I'm not sure how that goes if 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 it's um if it's a situation oh, okay. where because when you when you when you look further at um terminate and registration and reporting requirements, it says continue with or without variation for a period of period not exceeding 10 years judge can apply one or two at the end of further period right so it can in fact be extended in certain circumstances okay. uh, the judge will look at at all of, at, at everything and sometimes at the nature of the offense which was committed originally mm -hmm. and they determine at that stage after the 10 years whether it should be extended or not okay that's one or two years um i can't recall the exact years you have the advantage over me because you have the legislation in front of you but i don't think they would be restricted in terms of saying one or two years mm. so if you read out that section for me i would really appreciate it all right, all right, let, me, let me let me go into it it says um yeah. it says continue without um with or without duration of further period not exceeding 10 years judge can apply one or two at the end of further period a sex offender may be able may, may apply sorry to a judge in chambers for an order to terminate the registration and reporting requirements however this can only happen if the registered sex offender was given additional period or the reporting requirements were varied after the expiration of the original period of 10 years right so what that is saying to me is that the period can be extended and if uh, depending on the circumstances a judge can actually say you are, you can be removed from the registry because the application in chambers would have to be in the form of an affidavit which is fulsome mm -hmm. and would have to be convincing to the judge to justify uh, the judge saying okay you, your name can be removed from this registry and i believe although let's let's just be fair it is very difficult for us to see how it is that the law is applied and how it is that the sex offender is registered. And that's precisely what we are talking about now, because the whole thing is shrouded in so much secrecy. Yes. You really don't have an opportunity to determine whether or not it is working. And I remember when we were reviewing this piece of legislation, there were some people who couldn't even really say how the sex offenders registry was functioning and indeed um i looked back at some whatsapp messages that i had sent to say how many people have registered and i couldn't get a figure at the time what i was told is that they were aware that persons were registered but could not say um how many so there are some problems and 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 one has mm -hmm. to consider now and that is part of why we're having this discussion how can we improve this yes and there's the other point which I quite agree with Mr. Vegas. How are we going to deal with the issue of the foreigner who enters or the person convicted overseas who comes to Jamaica? For example, in the case of the pastor, yes. right, who was convicted of um, sexual assault on a 21-year-old young man, you know. Oh, well, I thought you were actually referencing the one who um, assaulted two members of his congregation age 13 and 14. So we have a oh. lot of pastors apparently <laughs> oh my gosh this is not he a good thing five years <laughs> he got five years 
Yes. General and he's totally deported to Jamaica. He was convicted in 2014, so he might even have been deported. Mm. Okay. Can, I, yeah. can I make a correction? Yes. This pastor started molesting the child when she was nine. Wow. And he has a church in Jamaica now. He, he has a church in Jamaica, and he has been approved to have a church in Jamaica. So he is a church, church in Jamaica. registered in Jamaica. Church in Jamaica now. The only thing he did was change off his first name and a different name. Still going around kids, still going around children. So he has a restaurant and a church. I don't care. You see, I'm not in for somebody serve them time and, and, and serve and you know, you know, face them judgment. And I said that person must be totally ostracized from society. Right? Then why we don't give them life imprisonment then, Mr. Vegas? Because that to me it don't make sense to ostracize somebody after they after you have a sentence. If we don't agree with the sentencing um guidelines, then how do we move forward? But look, but look at the look at the situation, look at the, 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 the magnitude. Um, in the U.S., of course, you know, they're up for deportation. So why think Uncle Sam go on, you know, pay... Uncle Sam deported a man for smoke a split. So we are chat mode. Yes, but... So but say, years, a man who smoke a split, then how you deal with him? But I wouldn't... I would, I would, I would not, I don't think that person would, would have gotten two years or five years. I'm not two situations. Two years and five years. For more or less... Uh, oh, it would have split? Depends on which state you are in. No, no, I'm talking about yes, the sexual offense. I'm talking about sexual oh. offense. Okay. So this man was a pastor, he was a principal, and he, he, he actually was molesting this child since she was nine. And according to the report, she got pregnant at 12, and they aborted the baby. This is not- Jackie Holden is not suggesting, once a sexual predator, always a predator, they cannot be re re rehabilitated. I, so is this first really a truth? And if that is so, why are we not giving them life imprisonment? I'll come back to that question. I, I don't think I don't think I'm in a position to position to say yo give a person life imprisonment. The, 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 the lawyer would know better than, than me on that. But I'm saying if a person serves five years in prison for such a gruesome for such gruesome acts, because not just one child we're talking about. And God God knows how many other children he molested in this in that congregation or in the school. He comes to Jamaica and no one is not on the sex registry and he's able to open a church. So who in that church knows about or know about his past? But the question, and that is a question we need to answer. Who needs to know about the past and what do we do with that past? And what is the impact on reducing recidivism? And uh, what's the impact on reintegration? Do we believe? Because here's a question that Stacey and Megu is asking. You know, do offenders mm -hmm. get counseling while incarcerated? And if they want to hear your voice a little bit in the, on this one here, so no. What do we think? Can we, it can, do we put enough effort into re rehabilitation? With effort in rehabilitation, is it necessary for everybody to know who was a sex offender? Or who should know who was a sex offender? Are you hearing, Ethne? And the oats. No, it looks like Ethne is frozen a little bit. Donna, you want to take that one then? So you want to know? Okay, this is going in and out, Patricia. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you? Can you? How are you now? Can you? Can you answer now? Hmm. All right. Try turning off your camera, Ethne, and see if that gives you some more bandwidth so we can hear you. And in the meantime, I'm going to switch to Donna. And Donna, could you give me your perspective on that? So we're talking this about... Is, uh, go this, ahead. this is something that has been very concerning to me. Because when you look at who can access the registry at this point in time, it is um, the police, the house, somebody, let, let me know, the, um, mm -hmm. persons engaged in professional counseling of sex offenders, prospective employers and employees of the sex offender, persons managing facilities for the care or treatment of vulnerable persons at which the success offender is or has applied to be, a patient, employee or volunteer, persons managing educational institutions at which the sex offender is enrolled or is seeking to enroll, and persons acquiring information approved by the minister for statistical purposes parent and a parent, guardian, caregiver, nearest relative or person having an association with a sex offender. 
And one of the things that I ask myself is if you are employing somebody who does not disclose that they have a record, because it's not on every form that you are real, uh, you are expected to say whether you have a conviction. And on some forms of application, even if you have a say, you 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 will say that you don't have a conviction, but you're not really mm. required to present a police report. So I'm struggling with some of these categories to say, how would they know that they need to apply for this information? I will tell you that I believe that the registry should be to protect those persons who are potential victims. And so if you are a predator, you're a predator. You, you're going, unless you, the therapy is intense, it is very difficult oh, for you to be habilitated. Ethne, can okay. you come in now? All right, Ethne, are you hearing? I was hoping that Ethne could join yes, the Yes, coming as now. well. Well, I want to, on that point, once a predator, always a predator. Um, that, so if a man commits murder and has done his time, then he, what, 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 what is the impact of that? No, but but let us be clear. We are not discussing the internet has been doing it at all. Yes, I realize. So you want to add your voice to that conversation now, Ethne? We're talking about one separator, always a separator, yes. or should you have intense counseling in prison, and then therefore, what it should be our reaction to um, making the registry public? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it depends on the perspective that you're taking it from. From a legal perspective, you know, persons, the, the rights of people matter. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Ethne has frozen again. But that's a big point that she's making. The rights of people matter. And I want to read. The, I had mentioned this when I was on air. In the UK, in the United Kingdom, in the case of R on the application of F and Thompson versus Secretary of State for the Home Department, the court held that public notification scheme as part of the sex offender registry implementation was a disproportionate interference with a convicted offender's right to private life under Article 8 of the European Convention of Human Rights and declared it incompatible with the convention on this basis so if well, all people's rights matter how do you manage that mm -hmm. well remember ethnic i'm not sure can you participate now i am hoping so because my internet is up and down up and down i'm out in the right. in the sticks here right. but um the, the point i was making and then i'll follow up <laughs> yes <laughs> okay the point i was making is that yes rights do matter uh, it's difficult, especially when you are on the receiving end. When you are the victim, it's that you're not going to have the kind of compassion for the perpetrator if you are the victim or if you are the family of the victim. There are many of us who have been, un you know, blessed not to have gone through particular gruesome experiences. But regardless, it doesn't it doesn't insulate us from the the trauma. It doesn't insulate us from the emotional upheaval, which is what I think, um, you know, Mr. Vegas is getting at. And even though you may not have experienced it personally, you will still want to ensure that that does not happen to someone else. Um, I believe that rehabilitation is possible. Um, it has worked with some persons. It has not with others. So in my mind, I think you need a sort of tiered system. You need some steps um, that can be applied to different categories of persons. Um, I don't believe it can just be an absolute situation where, you know, from, <laughs> from you have an offender, so and so for dead, which we have to address that in Jamaica against our cultural background where just last week we saw because of jungle justice, unfortunately, the wrong person was held and, and brutally, you know, murdered or killed. So it's, it's not as clear cut as we would like it to be. And I think whether we are the employer, I heard that bit just before I got um, bumped out. But let's say someone, you're, you're, you're employing staff, which is where you now the Women Entrepreneurs Network comes in. Um, you know, 
you want to ensure that you can protect the majority of your staff, actually all of your staff. So you do ask for police records to be done, and it's in the definition, I think, that was just read out um, by, by Patricia about the access to information. Now, I want to raise a question about SMEs in particular, that very often large companies can do these kinds of queries, can check to make sure that they know who is who and they know who mm -hmm. they're hiring. When you're a small business person, where I mean, you have two staff, five staff, um, well, that's micro into small in terms of the categories. Can you afford that kind of, of um, exploration to make sure that you protect yourself and your staff? Mm -hmm. And I will go further to say that quite a few women who are business owners end up hiring persons and they end up being the victims. So that puts a whole yeah. different spin on it, you know? Yeah. So it, it's a whole conversation that needs to be had. And then the question about, I'm making sure I drop in everything before I get cut out again. <laughs> um, <laughs> the question of the registry being totally public. No. I am not in support of it being totally public to the point where I can go in and see 20,000 sexual offenders because suppose, I am a different sort of predator. I can then decide, all right, these five that live in this community, may I deal with them this week, right? Next month, I take another five, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the conversation that we're having tonight is just a start. And after the conversation, there requires some kind of action. So what we do, what we are clear is that this, this act needs to come up for review, and we need to call for the review of the act. We are very yes. clear on that. Know what to happen in the review because what we are what we are saying is yes we need some kind of public registry and I'm hearing an idea coming out of Ethne that there needs to be a way in when everybody gets registered first we need to be able to register those who are coming into our country who are sex offenders and then yes. when everybody gets registered there needs to be a way to assess the level of um, the impact that any kind of counselling that might have had on them and their tendency to be a re repeat offender, and that not just be left to the Department of Corrections, et cetera. But we also need to find a way, when we are making it public, not to make it public like there's a published list and everybody can go and just every day, I want to just look at the list, but you'd be able to search or something. For example, Trinidad has it, where they make it public, okay. but you search on the name and then you identify, right. yes. and then it makes it accessible in that way. But then, that would mean that every employer, but if it's easy, you can always go on a website and search. If it's easier, every employer should do that. But then you also ask the question then, should it be made public to the Ministry of Education as a matter of course, and all schools that they have the list of them can check on it. And that, that is what I think. With pictures, because for example, you said a man changed his name, don't it? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. you could do that. But so this how, is with the facial recognition, sorry, go ahead, yeah. No, I'm saying that we, we have a chart of right which guarantees privacy to everyone. And we have to value that. Mm. But at the same time, when they were framing the Constitution, they also understood that there were certain circumstances. If it was demonstrably justified or reasonably justified, then you could actually um, ab abrogate some of those rights. I am mm -hmm. a strong... I am a strong uh, be believer in the constitution. So I have to start with respecting that. At the mm -hmm. same time, I have to be concerned about the vulnerable persons, young children in mm -hmm. particular, who find themselves at the receiving end, especially here in COVID. I can tell you that the reports that we have is that more and more children are being abused sexually. Mm -hmm. they, they, are, they, they, they are always in the house. So, so I do believe that this is a very, this dialogue is very important because we have to speak to the public and say, how far do we go with this? And how can we balance everybody's rights? Now, I don't believe in just a wholesale public registry because we still mm -hmm. have to have some control and respect people, think about those who might be rehabilitated, have some feelings for them too. Yes. We believe that if we want to protect the vulnerable in our society, we have to find a way. Mr. Vegas, I know you want to say something, but let, give me this last little point I oh want to make. Word, word. <laughs> so in Trinidad, and how they started it in Trinidad, you know, Pat, yes. is that a 
puff purses were just fed up and created this sort of website where mm -hmm. every time a newspaper report came out about somebody being charged, they would set up a link to it. Okay. So, so it yeah. wasn't whether you were convicted. It was just from the new newspaper report because it was already public and they would just set up a link to it. Mm -hmm. And of course, because because of this this sort of surge of public interest, the uh, authorities in Trinidad decided that they had to give some kind of um, access, but they had to also monitor how the access was done. So we in Jamaica need to think and have that discussion. Yes. And you know, the truth is that we have been at the forefront of women's rights in Jamaica. So we really are behind now. We can't stay too far behind. So Mr. Vegas, yeah. it's so nice. You go and set up the website with the link to every um Gleaner article <laughs> or every um observer article. <laughs> I was gonna ask um 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 Miss Miss Motley, you know, what kind of profit she is? Because <laughs> <laughs> I just text um, um Mr. Vegas, so, please call me Donna though. <laughs> all right, sorry, I just wanted to keep it respectful. Um, yeah. So I just um, said this to, to, to Gail, I think, two days ago, like, yeah, we need to revamp the Jamaica Men Against Rape website. And when somebody's um, convicted, because, you know, I can't put up somebody who was just merely accused, being accused of, of this thing. Because, trust me, right now the climate, people send me information every day and, and when we check it out. It's like people Not just want us Yes. I want to see a, 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 a lady there that they put up her father picture. I say, yo, this... This must be like, you see, I'm call her, I say, Father, I'm say, she said, no, but them no want to have no man. I say, they can't put up the man picture, said the man, you know, so you have to be very careful. So, so it's a good thing you said this. It's a good thing you said this because maybe it's this we need to do to grab the attention of the, the people that can make the change. Um, so but that's what, definitely I, I, one of them. Right, mm -hmm. I keep hearing a lot about, I keep hearing a lot about, um, oh, we can't make this thing public. We can't make the, everybody know about this thing. Well, you know what's sad? We can go downtown and see the names of all the missing children that is public. You see? So many mm -hmm. children you go down and you see them names carved in another in, 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 in wall where their names are, are made public. So when are we going to start putting the, 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 the main focus on the victims and, 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 and stop looking more at the well, of you know, and a Part of it I want to bring into this conversation though, how we going to prevent some of these victims? How are we going to get the social workers on the ground in the communities? Because yes. a lot yes. of the issues of incest um, in Jamaica come about so because that. of some some strong <laughs> beliefs that have been handed down through generations. That if co some conversations happened around it, that maybe we could change some behaviors, right? So. I think in this whole conversation, it's not just we need the review of the law, and I think we're calling for it, and we're glad that we have Senator. Let me put the Senator now, Donna Scott Motley in there, so we can ask her to call for this review in the Senate. That it's time for us to do this review because it is one of the things that will help us as a deterrent and also to manage when we put people at risk, both the perpetrator and the victim. Because when you put a perpetrator in a situation that a predator in a situation that would put temptation in front of them if they don't want to then it makes it even worse so we want to manage that and we also want to continue the call we need an army of social workers in jamaica on the ground an army of social workers not just for the purposes of preventing violence against our children and women but also for the purposes of teaching our men and women how to relate to each other so we can have positive gender relations in our country all right, now we have too many negative relations. The domestic abuse, you have Mr. Wright beating his girlfriend and then she's going back to him. You have the other lady in Hanover where she takes so much beating, but she's going back because she said, oh, just drop the case, drop the case, drop the case. You understand? Well, so, if, I, if I may jump in, Patricia, um, you know, going back to the, the, the title of our conversation too, I sort of want to broaden what it is that we're looking at. I remember a conversation I had with someone and I said, listen, what if, because I, as, as an entrepreneur, you deal with a lot of what ifs, right? As much as I'm an activist and a gender focused mm -hmm. person, um, we deal with a lot of what ifs. So what if a parent has a child who's going to university in Kingston or Montego Bay or whichever cosmopolitan area, mm -hmm. can that parent, does that parent have a system available that they can go in and check? each community 
around that school, that university, to determine what a safe zone, which safe zone is comfortable enough that their child can go and rent, or even if they're living on hall, um, or let's go live even, even broader. You know, I'm changing jobs. I want to move to Savlamar. I want to move to Portland. I want to move to Montego Bay. If there are safe zones, how do we define those safe zones? Well, if it is question. that the communities are... Yes, and if, if the communities are also going to be involved in the creation of these safe zones, is it only safe zones according to um, sexual offenses that we're looking at? What about safe zones according to, you know, murder? What about safe zones according to traffic, et cetera? It, you know, so it just, it just causes you to sort of snowball and say, but hold on there. What is a safe zone? How do we define it? Who is involved in it? If we're defining it according to what schema or matrix, um, then you get into the whole thing of how do we now uphold yes. a safe zone? So the monitoring and evaluation, the educational awareness that you were just talking about, Patricia, who monitors that? Who checks that? Which ministry, which industry does that sit in? Yeah. Or is it really getting back to the point that this it starts with us as individuals, it starts with us within our families, for it to be a community-based action? And I think that is where we were at originally when we did Unite for Change, to create those safe communities. It is really about engaging the community. But they need help. And that's why I say the army of social workers, they need help with all the different organizations coming in to help to create that awareness. But they also need the help of the law in terms of the sexual offenses registry, in terms of all of these acts that we have, that um, the Sexual Harassment Act, because that is actually a precursor to sexual crimes, right? Um, so they, they need help, and that's our job to help them. So one of the things that we know, and I think that I can safely say that all of us agree on, we are calling for a review of the sexual um, offend, the Offenders Registries Act in Jamaica and to look at it in the context of making it public and under what conditions or how do we ensure that we can have some amount of um, counseling for our offenders and how do we go about that? Can that be built into the act or not? And when and where this discussion must happen, we would want to see a joint select committee on it so we can get that full review and see us moving forward. And we're depending on Senator Mot Scott Motley and we're depending on Mr. Vegas for putting the pressure on by pulling in those that information. We're depending on your ethnic with the uh, Women Entrepreneur Network to put in that information from the entrepreneur's perspective. And I can tell you, you can depend on us as a women's movement to keep our voices loud, to keep speaking about it, to keep engaging with people like we are engaging today. And so I just want to say, this is a wrap for us tonight. I want to thank you very much for joining us. Donna, Senator Donna Scott Motley, the opposition spokesperson on justice and gender and call you community and social activists you know although you have another title as entertainer and i want to thank ethne miller who is in charge of the nine day one and a woman's entrep and she's a member of the women's entrepreneurship network and of the caribbean and i just want to say thank you very much it's been a good afternoon and we have work to do and we are all committed to doing it and it always starts with a conversation so and I want to thank the viewers for joining us today and for their comments. And please join us again in another two weeks for Orange Table Talk at Pat Sutherland JA. And please comment, like, and share our video. It's been good to have you. Thank you. Bye.